Let's get some analysis on this now with Klaus Lares. He's a professor of history and international affairs at the University of North Carolina. He joins us now from Chapel Hill. Welcome to the program, Professor. Can I start by asking you about the Turkish president's efforts to help mediate in this crisis? Turkey, as a NATO member, enjoys good relations with both Ukraine and Russia and is also a US ally, as we know. What impact could it have in trying to defuse the standoff over Ukraine? Clearly, Turkey is an important member of NATO. It's an important geopolitical player. Uh, and Erdogan knows Putin very well, both in a more friendly way and in a more critical way. You know, relations between Erdogan and Putin have not always been good. But I think Putin respects Erdogan. And so his uh, efforts to mediate, hopefully, they will be successful. At the moment, what you see is that a lot of uh, European uh, politicians are traveling to um, uh, Kiev to try to mediate and to uh, reassure Zelensky that he actually enjoys uh, the uh, support of the West. And this is a good thing. It also shows Putin that Ukraine isn't being left alone, that the Western world, including Turkey, and in particular, of course, including the United States, are strongly in support of uh, Ukraine. As we heard there, the US is ramping up efforts to support Ukraine by mobilizing thousands more troops to Eastern Europe. How is Russia likely to react to that? Well, Putin knows, of course, this are uh, symbolic deployments. You know, a few thousand of uh, American troops uh, are helpful. They are a sign of support for Ukraine, but they can't possibly compare with over 120, 130,000 troops which the Russians have along the Ukrainian border and in Belarus. And there are also widespread maneuvers taking place right now in the Mediterranean and elsewhere. So Russia is really very assertive, very aggressive, and you can't compare that with deployments deploying 3,000 soldiers to Poland, Romania and Germany, and even the 8,500 uh, soldiers, NATO soldiers, uh, on alert, standing by, they, you know, don't really, uh, they pale into insignificance in compa uh, compared to 120, 130,000 uh, troops. And they are not meant to, so, to fight in Ukraine. That is what Biden made clear today. The American troops uh, I just mentioned, they're not supposed to uh, fight in Ukraine, but they are supposed they are meant to show America's dedication to the NATO allies and that America is not being pushed about by any other power, including Russia, that they are prepared to support its allies. And I think that is the main importance of this deployment of 3,000 troops uh, to Eastern Europe and, of course, 8,500 who are standing by right now. We know that the US and NATO have rejected one of Russia's key demands, uh, banning Ukraine from ever joining NATO. Uh, given that fact, do you believe that uh, Moscow is likely to further invade Ukraine? Personally, I do not think that we can see a major invasion of Ukraine, maybe a, a meaning a wholesale takeover of Ukraine. But I could expect, or I, I'm may, uh, I may expect that an invasion, be it a hybrid invasion, be it a full-scale invasion of the Donbas region, of that eastern part of Ukraine, which is already under the very strong influence of Russia, that such an invasion, such a hybrid uh, incursion may take place. This may not be the huge crisis which a full takeover of Ukraine uh, would uh, be, but it would still be a major crisis. But what we see at the moment is that Putin is becoming less urgent. He is mentioning diplomatic dialogue more so than he has done only one or two weeks ago. Uh, two weeks ago, he talked about an immediate answer he needs to get from NATO and the United States about his own demands. You know, he didn't seem to have any time to rely on diplomacy. He wanted to have an immediate answer from the United States. Now we hear Putin and Lavrov saying that there is a time for a dialogue and time for engagement. And also the Normandy format between the four countries, uh, Russia, Ukraine and Germany and France, has taken place again and will take place in a couple of weeks again in Berlin. This shows that also Putin believes in diplomacy and is probably not intending to move into Ukraine in a military sense. Of course, he needs concessions. He needs to sell something to his own public at home. But uh, I think, uh, you know, the chances that that crisis can be overcome by peaceful means 
is actually greater now than it was only a couple of weeks ago. And mediation by uh, people like Erdogan and other European leaders, and of course by the United States and their active uh, dialogue between, for example, Blinken and Lavrov, and also Biden and Putin, that has all contributed to that. So I think there's hope yet that we will not see a major war in Europe again. Okay, Professor Klaus Lares, it was really good to get your analysis. Thank you again for joining us. Okay.